Hello friends and welcome to my channel. In this video, I am going to talk about the steady state characteristics of a two axle vehicle. Consider a vehicle that is taking a turn. We know that while negotiating a corner, there will be a side force that is acting laterally in the vehicle. For balancing this side force, we need appropriate cornering force in the contact patch of each tail. And this cornering force will result in slip angles in each four tails. And the magnitude of slip angle have a direct influence in the steering angle of the worker for negotiating a corner. As you can see in this left side, a figure. In this figure, for simplifying the derivation, we are adding up the slip angle and cornering force for each axle, and we are considering only two tears instead of four. This is for simplifying this derivation. So, uh, from this side, we can write it as. Uh, the steering angle which is delta is equal to L by R plus alpha F which is the slip angle at the front wheels and minus alpha R which is a slip angle at rear wheels which means that as the slip angle at rear wheels increases we, need, uh, we only need to steer a little for negotiating a particular radius R and as the slip angle reduces we have to steer the vehicle more for particular turn. This is the effect of understeer and oversteer. From this side, we can write the cornering force, which is F, the capital F, we are considering that as cornering force. And from this side, we can uh, write the equation of cornering force for the front and right. While take, uh, if we are taking the moment with respect to the rear side, we will be able to write the equation for cornering force at the front axle. And if we are uh, taking the moment with respect to the front axle, we can write the cornering force at the rear as well. We write the equation of cornering force by considering the weight that is acting in each axle. We know we are we already considered the figure as a sum of uh, the forces acting on two tears. And we can write the weight uh, as you can see here and we can rewrite the equation for cornering force just like this. So after this we know that the cornering stiffness if you are able to watch my video about the cornering stiffness and camber thrust things like that you already aware of the cornering stiffness and the cornering stiffness is defined as the ratio of cornering force by slip angle and from this equation we can also write it as the slip angle which is equal to the cornering force divided by the cornering stiffness so for each wheels it will be divided by two as you can see the equation of uh, the slip angle as i rewritten as like this and we can equate the same for the previous case as you can see in this equation right here and by finding the equation of alpha f and alpha r we already know i have shown an equation for the steering angle uh, in the first case and we can substitute the equation of the slip angle in the equation of steer angle as well so by doing that we will get or we will arrive at the particular equation as you can see here so after this from this side we can uh, write the understeer coefficient which is k suffix us and uh, the effect of understeer oversteer and neutral steer is directly proportional to the understeer coefficient and now we are going to look at when the understeer or oversteer or neutral steer happens first we will consider the neutral steer in the neutral steer the coefficient of or understeer coefficient will be equal to zero so uh, the outward term will become zero and the steer angle will is equal to l by r ratio which is l is the wheelbase and r is the radius of curvature so the vehicle will follow the uh, r radius r uh, so the uh, we have to steer the vehicle just enough there is no damage effort required so as you can see that in the graph too uh, it shows the understeer neural steer and oversteer as well so after this uh, if you are considering the understeer case where the vehicle will not follow the intended path because of the slip angle in this case uh, the front slip angle will be greater than the rear slip, line, slip angle so the KUS or the understeer coefficient will have a positive value so for taking a particular turn or particular radius of coverage R we have to steer more that's the case of uh, the understeer 
so as you can see in this graph there is a characteristic speed so at this particular speed we have to steer twice as much compared to the neutral steer so uh, the angle need to take a constant radius will be twice as much compared to the neutral steer and for the oversteer case and the oversteer case we know that uh, the rear slip angle will be greater than the front slip angle or front slip angle so in this case the KUS have a negative value as you can see here and there will be also a critical speed in this critical speed the worker or we doesn't need to take any steering angle the worker will follow the start the higher the directional stability the worker will take the cornering maneuver easily without any turn so we doesn't need any steering angle for taking a turn that's what called oversteer the slip angle at the rear side will be greater than the front slip angle so uh, this is why uh, you can see this sports car and especially Porsche 911 is a rear engine worker so you have higher mass in the rear side so the worker will intend to oversteer this is the cases of oversteer understeer and neutral steer hope you learned about it so uh, we know that also the cornering stiffness also depends on the inflation pressure the cornering force and the weight acting on each axle and each tear and if you love to watch these kinds of vehicle dynamics video don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to get notified when i make a new upload thank you for watching have a nice day and bye